I want you to get your thoughts on social media and how that would impact you back then. Not so much like using social media now, but like, let's say you had to be in spotlight more often in the past during, during like the 80s. Like how would that have affected your career or some choices that may, maybe you would have made? I think if I'm understanding your question, you're asking about whether social media has made a difference in, in casting since the 80s? I guess maybe would have changed any choices that you would have made back then? Oh, well, um, or like maybe, maybe you had to be more in the spotlight? It's always been a popularity contest uh, with some people, and with other people it's, it's who you know, but it's also what you have, like Greg said, it's what you bring to the table. What you have to have is voice separation. Uh, when it comes to uh, social networking, it's vital now. Without social networking, you're not going to get cast because it's a great way to let people know that the show's coming out and that many more people are aware of it. So there's a great need for social uh, networking and, and all of that interaction. Wouldn't you say, Greg? Uh, unquestionably, and had I known then what I know now, yes, I would have done everything uh, with a knowledge which I didn't have uh, of, of the audience that was out there. And the, the, uh, the 19th hole of the golf course, the, the extra player that you don't know that you have, which is fandom. And fandom in this franchise in particular has gone through so many twists and turns and changes and cast changes and always uh, expressed themselves loudly uh, to Hasbro and the concerns that, that are. They've affected some casting choices. They've affected a lot of things. But, um, you know, I, the first time I really experienced it was at BotCon in, in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Uh, and uh, Michael Bell and John Stevenson and I walked into a building feeling basically anonymous because it had been so long since we had recorded episodes of G1. And we were, we were lifted. We might as well have been demigods for the whole weekend. And that was just the first time. And then people told me about realignment and how Transformers has, has some arcs that are circular and harken back to G1 and, and uh, go through the trans... At any rate, it's, it's, so it's, 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 it's a layered puzzle and it's fascinating. But just the social media aspect of it began for me with uh, uh, Christy Spruill, I think is her last name. Uh, I'm just not sure of pronunciation. But she had a concern called uh, Voice Chasers. And she made it her business, and now behind the voice actors and numerous other sites that are watching us, and we don't know that we're being watched, but they're creating a celebrity status for voiceover people who notoriously have been anonymous. We're, we're disembodied voices, but not anymore. They're compiling and they're, they're inputting all of this vast data into their systems. They have their own awards shows. And, and uh, just by adding a face to the voice and then by compiling the number of things that you may be in at any given time, they've created a celebrity to this, which obviously, uh, I mean, it's taken me around the world uh, and uh, I've had travel experiences, I've had audience experiences. I know that people come to conventions as far as special guests to say thank you, but I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I come to say thank you too. I, I, this is the only thing that affords us a one-on-one -on -one connection with fandom and with audience you know, they say in movies, you, you create a successful movie one ticket at a time. Every time you sell a ticket, that's part of your success. And look what the Transformer Nation has done to sell more tickets for more Transformer movies. I mean, totally. So your social networking, your gathering together has created a movement that has moved not only the spindle on the toy marketing, but also on the movie marketing and on the whole enterprise marketing. This is it like is all conjoined. It's like a liquid morphing entity, transformers, I mean, because it's gone through all kinds of media shifts, generation shifts, story shifts. When I did uh, Devastation, uh, they told, thank you. 
they, they told me that they actually had to make some canon changes and that what they were creating was ways for Grimlock to be restricted in more reasonable, rational ways. Uh, they gave me a reason to be a little behind the beat, uh, although uh, equally... The Dinobo Dinobots e really need that, too. Equally aggressive. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you got to look for the beat. It's out, it's out there somewhere. Just keep tapping You're your foot. You're a little off, Plum. <laughs> but that's a great question. Things have changed so dramatically that it's not even, it's not even close. 